I'm your host, Dr. Robin McKay, and I'm an award-winning psychologist, an author, a keynote speaker, an executive coach for primarily women in tech, healthcare, entrepreneurship, and other high-performance fields. And today, we are talking about three things you can do to overcome overwhelm. So since you're here with me on that, I'm guessing that you have experienced overwhelm yourself and I am happy to share with you some of my, some of my recommendations for recovering from overwhelm. So I want to share with you kind of what the impetus for this particular topic was because of course it didn't occur in a vacuum. A lot of the things that happen behind closed doors with my clients who work with me privately, I really believe are sort of part of what's going on in the collective consciousness as well. And in fact, in the last week, I've had a couple of my private clients, one who's in tech, who said that she's just been feeling overwhelmed about the amount of work that she has in front of her. She has some big goals for herself in terms of her career, and she's balancing work with family and so on, and just was just noticing a sensation of overwhelm. Another client who works in healthcare said that even now, even two years later, the lingering demands of the pandemic, along with her continued demands for her production metri metrics have been really weighing her down as well. So I'm sure that you have your own story of overwhelm. And in a few minutes, I'm, I am going to take you through my best recommendations for overcoming overwhelm. But before I do, I wanted to start by taking a look at the definition of overwhelm. We use that word a lot in our culture, don't we? And yet we don't really pay attention to what it actually means. We assume that we know that it mean, what it means, but I wanted to do this first. So the dictionary definition of overwhelm, there are three. One is to bury or drown beneath a huge mass. That's in the, the context of water overflowing and overwhelming the whole dam and the village beneath it. That would be an example of being buried or drowned beneath a huge mass. But as I say that, if you've experienced psychological overwhelm, it can feel that way. It can certainly feel like everything has been engulfed or buried by these duties, responsibilities, and obligations that you might be experiencing in your own life. A uh, second definition is to defeat completely. And I think in terms of our humanity, when you are experiencing chronic overwhelm, when your body goes into surge capacity, it certainly can feel like you're completely defeated. And then the third definition is to give too much of a thing to somebody or to inundate somebody with a thing. That can be overwhelmed with gratitude, but it can also be overwhelmed with duties, responsibilities, and obligations, which I suspect is the case for most of my listeners. Um, it certainly has been for me and my private clients as well. So just to good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you all here. How fun is this to have our live our live viewers with us? And I'd love to hear from you since you are here with me. Which definition of overwhelm did you relate to? The one where you were completely inundated and flooded with responsibilities or one of the other ones? Love to hear from you on that. Okay, so next up, now that we've defined what overwhelm is, I wanna take a look at how I think about overwhelm. And you know, other people who talk about overwhelm are probably gonna have a different perspective on this. This is just my perspective. You can take it or leave it. Let me know what lands for you though. So I wanna take a look at the three layers that make up your experience of overwhelm. We're gonna look at the outer layer first, then the middle layer, and then the innermost layer. So the outer layer of overwhelm is the one that you are mo probably most fully aware of when you're feeling overwhelmed. What does overwhelm look like from the outside? It can look like a fight, flight, freeze, or fawn experience. So, it actually kind of mimics almost a trauma response. And it could be actually a trauma response as well. But it can look like things, it can look like, I don't know where to start. 
It can look like I'd really rather sit on the couch and watch, binge watch Netflix than do this thing over here that's been pressing on me that I have so much to do. I just don't even know where to begin. It can look like people pleasing. It's interesting, the, the uh, physical experience of overwhelm can be paradoxical rather than pushing away or moving away from whatever you're overwhelmed by. Some people will press into it and overgive. The second layer of overwhelm is on the mental and emotional level. This is hidden from plain sight. And I know that for a lot of high performers, high achievers, people like you who are, who are with me today, often when we, and myself included in this, by the way, when we're feeling overwhelmed, we don't always say anything. We might tell other people that we're fine. We might double down on our efforts. We might do some things in order to make it look like we, we are just fine, just fine. But actually what's happening beneath the surface is that our psychological and our energetic resources are being taxed and we are overcompensating. We're overcompensating for our inner experience of feeling despair, frustration, exhaustion, because as, as far as we've come in the workplace, in terms of taking care of our mental health, in terms of caring about other people's mental health, I think as leaders, we've been conditioned for so much of our lives to just put our emotional, psychological, and mental needs on the back burner and to show up in a way that instills confidence in the people that we're leading. And quite frankly, when you have a very bright intellect, you can mask overwhelm for a really long time until you simply can't anymore. And by that time, the whole system is starting to burn out. So that's the middle layer. That's that mental, emotional, and psychological level that gets hidden from, sort, from plain view. And then we'll talk about the innermost layer. The innermost layer of overwhelm is actually the root of it is energetic. So I want to talk about the energetics of overwhelm. You know, if you've been in my sphere for long enough, you know that I say this a lot, that everything is energy, including the experience of overwhelm. Now, there are some cases where the thing, I'm going to use the thing with a capital T, the thing that is is creating the conditions for you to feel overwhelmed may not in the past have felt overwhelming at all. You might be looking at that same thing, whether it's, I don't know, a new project that you're working on or a new case that you have coming into your, into your practice or whatever it is. In the past, you might have looked at that thing as a challenge. You might have looked at that thing and thought, this will be a great experience. You might have looked at that thing with excitement, with, ex with enthusiasm, with a sense of possibility. But when the physical sim system becomes depleted, which to no great surprise, many of us have systems that are depleted, what with the last couple of years being, being as they've been. When the physical system is depleted, what ends up happening is that those things that normally wouldn't evoke a, a feeling of overwhelm start to. You start to experience things that normally would be viewed as a challenge or something to used to grow, grow yourself, to develop yourself as a leader, as a person, uh, become overwhelming to your physical system. So the energetics of overwhelm then become something we really need to look at because we're talking about your own personal energy. So we have to look at where is your energy depleted? How are you sleeping? Are you waking up in the middle of the night and your mind is racing? I can't get back to sleep. Are you having a hard time falling asleep? Are you dehydrated? Is your immune system compromised? There are all of these physical things that happen within the system, within your physical system, that contribute to your experience of something being a challenge or something being completely overwhelming and par par paralyzing. 
So that's the innermost layer. Now, here's the thing about overwhelm. Overwhelm thrives in a closed system. In other words, and by thriving, I don't mean that in a positive way for you, but for the, the energy of overwhelm, if overwhelm were a person, it would kind of be a, a bully. It would kind of be some, somebody who would want to harm would want to do harm to you, would want to distract, would want to keep you from living your best life. And it begins to thrive when you don't say anything. So let's talk about what doesn't work when it comes to overcoming overwhelm. One of the things that doesn't work is to keep it to yourself, to keep your mouth shut, to put your head down, to bury your, yourself in work, to work harder, work longer. That doesn't work. All it does is actually feed the system of overwhelm. So that doesn't work. Sitting in one place doesn't work. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through your phone doesn't work. Watching Netflix until one o'clock in the morning doesn't work to overcome overwhelm. And yet those are the first line of defense. Those are the first things we often go to to kind of check out from the experience of overwhelm, but they don't work. They, well, let me say this, they can work in the short term, but certainly it's not something that is going to be in the long term healthy or productive or um, help you recover from whatever overwhelm you're experiencing. I'm just checking to see if they're, any comments or questions or ahas? If, you, if you've got one, let me know in the comments. So if those things don't work, the things, the first line of defense, I'm gonna work harder, I'm gonna stay at my seat until I get everything done. I'm gonna force myself to do this. If those things don't actually work in the long term, what does support? What does support you overcoming overwhelm? And I have probably have more than three things, but we'll start with three things. First of all, what you need to know is that overwhelm is the first is first the energy that your body and brain experience when your system is taxed. So when your intellectual and energetic resources are depleted, something that's usually simple like for example, getting up out of your desk, moving around, going for a walk, getting out in the sunshine can feel extremely burden, burdensome. And yet that is actually one of the first things that you can do to overcome overwhelm is to shake it off, get up, move around. Remember, you don't have to problem solve your way out of, of overwhelm. Instead, what you can do is move your way out of it. Overwhelm is at first an energy. So change the, change the energy, change your energy, change your location. It doesn't have to take long. You don't have to get on a Peloton for 45 minutes to shift out of overwhelm. You can go for a five minute walk and feel better because what we're really looking for, for here is to change your perspective. Just change your perspective. It's hard to change your perspective when you're still sitting at your screen feeling overwhelmed and now you're not doing anything except scrolling and maybe you're checking Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, but you're not doing the thing that you're meant to be doing anyway. So get up, move around, walk around. Give yourself permission to do that. That is, after all, the 21st century way of, of working is taking care of your physical sy system, managing your energy. So unhook yourself from whatever you're doing. Go outside stretch, do some exercise. It doesn't have to be a lot, even if it's five minutes, even if it's five minutes, it's enough to shift your perspective. So that's the first thing. Shake it off. The second one is to talk it out. Now, here's the thing about our brains is that when we speak something, when we say something out loud, the energy centers that are involved in symptoms of overwhelm, also frustration, fear, anger, any of the, any of the uh, emotions that we experience as human beings in the limbic system, when we speak out loud what we're feeling, those regions of the brain that are activated during an emotional response start to quiet. 
And the, the regions of the brain that are responsible for executive functioning, for language start to come online. So just simply by speaking out loud how you're feeling, I feel overwhelmed. I feel frustrated. You're shifting the activity in the brain from that pure kind of dinosaur brain, limbic system, overly emotional experience into rational, logical, get, rational, logical thinking, getting more into more access to your executive function. So talk it out. By the way, if you choose to talk it out with somebody else, you can just preface the conversation by saying, look it, I don't need you to problem solve anything for me. I just need you to listen and to reflect back to me what you are hearing. This is something that a lot of people want to be very helpful to do. And yet a lot of people immediately jump into problem solving. You don't need anybody to solve your problem at this point. What you need is a sounding board. You need a shift in perspective. So if they can do that for you, just listen without making any recommendations, just listen and reflect back what they're hearing. That is going to be enough to shift your energy out of overwhelm, change your perspective so you can see a way through so that you can have more access to your creativity, to your innovative style of thinking and so on. So first one, shake it out. Second one, talk it out or talk it through. Um, the third one is this, and I find this a lot, especially with my clients who have some neurodiversity, whether it's ADHD, um, 